I want to give a quick shout out and thanks to handheldlegend.com. Um, handheldlegend.com is a pretty cool uh, site where they, they sell some aftermarket parts and replacement OEM parts for uh, any handheld console. So your Game Boys, your Game Boy Advance, your Sega Game Gear, that type of thing. Um, as a way of saying thanks to my viewers, they've provided me with a code which allows the first 10 viewers who place an order on handheldlegend.com to receive 10% off their order. I'm going to leave that code in the description below, so thanks a lot for watching and enjoy the episode. Hey YouTube, Adam here with Retro Repairs, and time for a, uh, another repair slash modification video. So, as you can see here, we've got a Game Boy Advance in front of me. I picked this up on eBay for $15, I believe. And they sent it to me with the issues that the D-pad didn't work. So in a previous version of this video, I, I repaired that D-pad issue. It was really actually a very simple fix. Um, so I'll show you how to do that. But the um, thing I found interesting, they put a little custom Pokemon decal on the back here. Um, so I thought I would do a couple of mods to make this particular unit a little more user-friendly. So I'm going to show you what I mean. Let's turn this on. And... Let's take a look at this screen. So, unless you're looking at it dead on, even when you're dead on, you get a lot of glare. It's not very nice. Tilt it a little bit. It's really hard to see. There's no backlight at all. Um, so, it's really tough to play this, especially if it's slightly dark. So, I got, uh, I did a little bit of online shopping and wound up with this. Now this is a package, as you can see, and what might be in the package, you might ask? Well, let's take a look. Apparently I'm opening it backwards. Okay, so got a couple little baggies here. And let's go with this one first. So I ordered this stuff from a place called Handheld Legend. And they sell replacement uh, parts and mods for really most common handheld cartridges. So, or not cartridges, consoles. So your Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. Um, so I bought a couple replacement lenses for both the Game Boy and the Game Boy Advance. Um, I bought this thing here, which is called Bivert Chip. So that's a mod for the original Game Boy, which I'm going to go into. But um, let's put that off to the side. This is what I'm more excited about. And this is a replacement LCD screen, which is backlit. So this, uh, this whole kit, well, for the backlight anyways, this cost, I think it was about 50 bucks. And what we've got is a new backlit screen. A replacement lens, some adhesive, a couple little plastic parts for spacing, and a custom ribbon connector. So they actually designed this little connector um, to convert the old non-backlit LCD connection into this guy. So I wanted to uh, install this, see, document the process of installing it and really see how I think it works. So let's, uh, let's dive right into it. Um, so this is now loose. Now what we want to do is remove this LCD screen. So up at the very top here, there's this little ribbon connector, and this is what connects the LCD to the main board. So I'm just going to pop up these two gray tabs on the side, and then this should just lift straight out like that, and we can put this off to the side. I'm not going to touch it for a while. So now we have the main or the uh, the main part of the front of the shell. So we can take the buttons and put them off to the side, just so that if you flip it over, buttons aren't going flying any everywhere. So what we've got in here now is the LCD, and this needs to come out. Sometimes you can simply grab it and lift it. If it doesn't come out nicely, what you can also do is very gently just twist it a little bit like this and that will work it free of that adhesive. Now we can lift that LCD out, and this is the original non-backlit LCD from a Game Boy Advance. So this is a working LCD. I'm gonna keep this um, just in case I need to replace one on a future damaged one, but uh, we're gonna replace it on this particular console with a new version of that. So 
what we need to do first is a couple modifications to the case. Uh, firstly, we want to remove all of this adhesive here. So it should probably come up just in one. There we go, just like so. And I might even try and just pop that on the front of the LCD here, just so that maybe it can be reused. Maybe it won't, I don't know. And then we can put that over to the side. Next, what we want to do is pop out this front lens. Um, now, it's not absolutely required that you do this, but this particular one was a little bit dirty, a little bit scratched, and I bought a glass one, which is going to be more durable and just look a lot better. So I'm going to pop that straight up from the inside and again, put that off to the side. What I like to do anytime I do that, though, is give it a bit of a clean with some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. Just get up any remaining little residue and adhesive that might be left behind. So now flipping that back upside down, um, there's a little bit of a modification that now has to occur to this. So what we need to do is remove a portion of the plastic on the inside of here so that the new screen can fit in nicely. Um, so there's a couple ways to do that. You can use either side cutters or you can use a Dremel tool or something that will actually grind it away. I'm gonna try it with side cutters, but if I start to notice a lot of issue, I'm gonna to go to an electronic solution. So these are flush side cutters, so they cut a nice flat um, cut here. So I'm just gonna go all the way down, put some pressure down, cover it with my hand just so it doesn't pop me in the eye and cut these knobs off. So what we want to do is try and cut off as much of this as possible going up the side and then also right here it appears we need to make a trim as well. So let's see what we can do here. <laughs> So that looks to be not too, too bad. Just double checking with the original installation instructions just to make sure that everything looks good. One thing I did miss, I'm going to zoom in here just because this is an easy miss, is right, so you see right along here, this hole where I had to cut in, um, that is recommended again. But right here, there's a little notch, little nub poking out. That needs to be trimmed back. So let's see if we can do that just with... There we go. can just slice that away. Okay, so now what we want to do, once we've got that... Uh, that trimming completed is first give it a little bit of a clean, get the little plastic residue bits out of there. If any of those appear on top of the screen after you've reassembled it, it's gonna show forever and you don't want that. So just give it a wipe down, try and remove everything that you can here. With the board, this is where you're gonna connect that ribbon connector. And this ribbon connector has two different well, technically, I guess three different connectors on it. This particular one is where it connects to the screen itself. And then both of these sides here are for various sized, um, there are a couple different revisions of this console. So some of them have different number of pins. So you need to find the one that fits. In this case, the wide one does not fit, but the narrow one does fit. So this particular version has the narrow pins and so what we do we connect it with those pins pointing up push it straight in and then you need to close those tabs and 
Now flipping it over, this is all going to flip over top now. And how is this going to go? I think it goes down now like so. And then the screen will connect just like that. I see. So we're going to connect this screen in right here, just like so. And I think what I'm going to do is hook this up to the batteries and I want to test that this actually works. So let's, uh, let's get this board put in here. We're not going to screw anything together, but I just want to be able to install some batteries, turn the power switch on and give her a look. Just like so. Now, let's turn this power switch on and see what happens. All right, so that does work. Let's try it just with a cartridge, just to make sure nothing funky is happening. Power on. Looks like it's booting up just fine. Oops. And unfortunately to pass this, I need to use the pad. Press start. But I mean, that looks pretty good. And that was a relatively simple plug and play um, installation. I'm, I think so let's uh, let's continue along here and actually install this guy so okay so now that we've uh, we've got this on here and we've tested it so we do know that the screen works again just an example here it's a pretty nice display so now we're gonna look at um, how it's gonna be centered on the actual front of this Game Boy Advance so the way it's gonna be assembled is this Ribbon folds back over, and then all of this folds back down and sits inside the display. So really, what we need to do is <clears throat> line up the top of the display, put it in here, and then just very gently fold it back over. Make sure these buttons are taken care of. I can get that out of here. just to kind of get an idea of what this is going to look like. So let's turn this on. Okay, so screen is working. We've got the uh, boot screen here. So not too bad. So the thing that you notice right away is the bottom of the display is a little bit cut off. If you look at it straight on like that, you see that there's a few rows of pixels. If you kind of angle it, you can look down and see it. Um, but the same thing exists, I believe, on the right side here. So what we do need to do is find a way to shift this screen up a little bit and um, make sure that we can see that whole display. So let's turn this off. Oops. There we go and then lift this back out. And now let's take a look at this part here. So let's set this down and see what it is that we're looking at. So this does have a little bit of give up and down and it um, also appears that they've included a couple little brackets here. So we got these little plastic parts and the instructions don't really say what you're supposed to do with it, but um, my assumption is it's probably going to fit in here somewhere. Maybe not. Oh, that's a convenient fit. So this part this thick bracket right here. It's gonna, it looks like it's gonna fit very nicely right there. And that's gonna hold this in place right where we need it to be, hopefully. 
So let's try connect that again and see if that's going to do the trick to keep it vertically aligned. So that's uh, actually pretty good. So we've got that vertical alignment proper, I think. So I think we're good to uh, proceed here. So now that we've got the vertical alignment down here, and that's what this uh, little bracket comes in play for, uh, we need to figure out the horizontal alignment. Now, this screen is actually slightly bigger than the OEM screen that I pulled out of here. So that would be this guy here. Um, so what they do to accommodate for that is they include a uh, aftermarket display part, which is slightly bigger than the original one. So it provides a slightly larger, you can probably see that kind of right here. If I line the left edge up, you can see that this is a slightly bigger viewing area. Now you can, you can make up for that by centering this display a little bit better so it sits right in the middle. You might give up about a pixel on each edge here and that's hardly going to be noticeable. So what I want to do is use an original size lens without modifying the actual window cut out here. So that's what you would also have to do is cut this window part, up, part out so that you got a bit more viewing area. So I really don't want to do that. Um, I don't have... I don't really trust that I can make this nice and straight. Um, I don't really have a great tool to do that. So I'm just going to try and center it a bit better. So we've already done the vertical centering using this wider bracket right here. I'm just going to put this back in to illustrate. So that fits nicely here. And they've included this little horizontal spacer, which would go along this side here where the buttons are. However, um, as you can see, this doesn't really fit in yet. It's just too thick. So what we have to do is remove a bit more of this, um, this little part of the plastic right here. So everything in a vertical line here up until this notch um, actually is going to have to be removed. Okay, so this is the end result that we've got here. So I've removed that length of plastic right here. We've left this slightly angled bit here so that when you put the, I guess this would be left, so you put the left trigger in there, it has something that the little spring loaded bit here can actually press against. So that's still going to work. So now let's throw those spacers back in and see if, double check that this is actually going to fit. Okay. So I do want to um, point one thing out, and I did make a mistake here already. Um, when we were installing those spacers, I put the horizontal, or the vertical one, I guess, actually on the wrong side. So what I've done, in fact, is <clears throat> make it so that I've pushed the screen even further in the direction I didn't want it to go. So this actually needs to go on this side, and that... Um, yeah, was not done properly. So I'm going to cut off a little bit of, actually, I'm going to cut the entire edge here and then I can lift that up. So I'll give it a little bit of something for the screen to grab onto, but I don't want to give the whole, um, the whole edge. So if in the off chance that this needs to be removed for whatever reason, I'm still able to do so. So the next part is going to involve um, a little bit of soldering. So I'm going to disassemble this board once again, take the batteries out, and pull this guy out. Just easier when it's not connected to the shell. So we can lay that flat. Now, what we're going to do, heat up the soldering iron. And what I have is some... Um, cable like this. This is 30 gauge uh, solid strand, solid uh, wire, and I'm just going to pull off three strands of this. Um, I like this as it's, it has them all bonded together so it can help keep things nice and neat, and then you can split them apart to uh, connect where you need to. So I'm going to start peeling it back. I'm not going to actually cut it because I want to make sure that I have the proper amount of cable first, but um, split apart the three ends here. 
You don't need a lot stripped. Something like that is plenty. Oops, kind of bumped the camera a bit. All right, so there we have three ends. Oh, this is stranded wire. That's fine though. So now what I like to do before I tin any wire, just gonna put a tiny bit of flux on it. I just like to use a flux pen and that just helps to prepare the wire to receive solder. So now I'm gonna take my soldering iron Clean the tip a little bit. I'm gonna tin the tip. Just get a nice blob of solder on there. And, oops, let's twist that together. There we go. Just gonna transfer some of the solder onto these wires. And that just helps make it easier for it to connect to the pads later. Perfect. So next, um, they're gonna get connected to the select, the right and the left pads right here. Apparently ground does not matter on this particular one. Um, I guess the ground comes in through the ribbon anyways. So we're gonna follow the directions and tint up the select right and left pads. So select, Right and left. There we go. Cool. So that is ready to go. Now, should be pretty straightforward to do this. We're just going to bring them in a little bit tighter together. And then solder them in just like so. So left and right, I want to use black and white. Um, and then the gray will be the select. So first one in will be left. Lay it on the pad. Touch the soldering iron. Let it go. And that's connected. Same thing with right. And then select. All right. So that's connected now. Um, now is uh, the time where we figure out how we're going to run the wires onto the spots on the board that we need to go. So from what I understand, it's easier to do this part with the ribbon disconnected and actually have it sort of installed to the front side instead. So we're going to take that off, set this over to the side. Now we're going to grab the front part of the shell. Now there is a nice uh, two-sided tape that comes with this and it's going to sit in place just like so and it's going to hold everything together so that it's nice and easy to, uh, to deal with. Now let's get the orientation correct. Looks like this is the way to go. So I'm just going to cut out the middle first. We don't need this. So now we can see what we're doing. Peel off the backing and stick her into place. So it is a great idea um, not to remove the other part of this backing until you are 100% sure you are ready to go. Um, the reason for that is once you adhere this two-sided tape to the display, you're never going to get that display off without breaking it. So um, pretty important aspect, I think. Um, however, what I am going to do is use my knife, uh, cut off a tiny bit at the bottom here, and peel back this so that I can adhere those spacers because the spacers like to fall out and this will just be a lot easier to deal with. Didn't quite go through. All 
All right. Hopefully that's enough to make it stick. Try and just make sure it's as far against the bottom as possible. And there we go. That feels good. And then same thing over on this side. So we're just going to peel off a small amount of the edging here. You don't even need to go all the way up, just something so that you can hold this spacer in place. And then get that spacer down in there. That should work just like so. so I'm going to put a very small, cut a very small bit of this adhesive back so that it will try and tack it into place. So thinking a little notch on the top here will be appropriate. It might be too small, but... And a little bit here. There we go. So connect it while it's off if you need to and put the display into place. There we go. So that should be sitting nicely. Now, a good idea is take a little bit of that um, center chunk that we removed here. I'm going to cut a small strip. I'm going to say like this, just like so, and I'm going to attach that to the display itself. Now what this is going to do is insulate um, this ribbon firstly. Um, there's really nothing with current that should affect it. I'm just going to very lightly press it into place, but it also holds everything in place nicely. So I'm going to fold this back. Again, just very lightly tack it in there. just like so. So now, when this, um, the back part actually gets connected, so it's gonna sit just like so in the shell, which is gonna sit like this. So this ribbon is gonna, this top part's gonna flip over top here, connect in there, and this is how it's ultimately gonna sit. Um, so we just wanna make sure everything's kinda of sitting nicely, not moving around, not gonna get caught up in anything. So now we need to um, prepare the actual board itself for the soldering job. So let's uh, let's take a focus here. I'm going to show you the points we're actually going to solder to. So just grabbing my solder to use as a point here. So what we're looking for is down here, TP2. That's going to be where we're connecting the select or the gray one to. TP9 is for left. And TP8 is right here. And that's going to be the black one, I believe. TP8 is white, TP9 is black. So, just going to line this up. Hopefully we can see all of these in the frame. Looks like it. So let's get the soldering iron going. Clean it off a bit. And just going to tin up these pads. So heat them up a touch with the soldering iron. Introduce a bit of solder. And the point is you just want to leave a little blob of solder right there. Nine and then TP8. That should be good. So let's set that put the soldering iron down and then grab my board again. So I think I might, might be easiest to now connect this. So let's hook this up. Okay, so that should be in there. And then I just want to get a visualization on how I'm going to run these wires up. 
So I believe they should all sit nicely under here. So I need enough wire to get to TP8, TP9, and then TP2. That's going to be about this much. So let's split these wires up and trim them to individual lengths. Okay, like I mentioned before, I'm going to flux up the tin tips. Let's zoom out a bit so we can see a bit better. Wipe the hand off. All right. And I'm going to tack these into place now. So let's uh, line this up with TP2 and then solder that joint right there. Okay. So that one is good. TP9 is left and is black. So let's get the black over here. Make sure the tips kind of twisted together. Lay it down there and I cannot Let's see. I just got an awkward angle here. And then same thing for TP8. Okay, so those should be good. So now we got to find a way that I can flip this over and make sure that these are not in the way of anything. So let's take a look at this. I need to move it up a tiny bit, like so. So now let's try that again. Okay, so we see it now, it's sitting under here. So just need a little bit of a manual adjustment. Okay, so that's sitting all right. These are also interfering. So on the right side here, this select one, you can see it's being kinked there. So we're seeing that it's... Um, you got to find a better place for this to go. So it seems like half of the battle with this installation is the way that you route the wires. So let's see what we can do to fix this. So this comes on the inside. I think the solution is going to be to notch a little bit in here. So that's what I'm going to do. Being very careful not to put pressure onto the display. I don't want to follow through with this knife. Should be good. So let's try that again. Okay, so black wire is going through nicely. Just make sure that it's all out of the way. Okay, so that is okay. Gray wire is going in the area that we've provided. And sorry that you're not really able to see exactly what I'm seeing, but all right, so that's sitting much better now. So let's reinstall those screws.
Okay, so power on. Oh, what the hell? There we go. Battery wasn't quite in. Okay, so let's test all the buttons. Left, right, left, up, left, right. So, the nice thing about this screen is it has a little brightness switch. So apparently if you hold down select, you can turn the brightness down by hitting the left button, left trigger, brightness up by hitting the right trigger. Oops, just a little lag apparently. There we go. Five, six, seven. There you go. Nice little feature. So if it's not super sunny out, you can turn oh, come on. Turn the brightness down to help save on battery a little bit. So neat little feature. I believe this will actually save the brightness if you turn it off and then turn it back on. Doesn't look like it did. Anyways, um, so let's put these screws in here and I got one last change I do wanna make. So I'm gonna switch this out to the tri-wing and I'm just gonna pop these in real quick. Okay, so one thing I do wanna do, take get rid of this uh, plastic screen and I actually bought a replacement screen for this which I think is going to suit the actual system pretty well. And it's a uh, custom glass Pokemon theme display. So this is plastic. It's actually, I hope there's a layer on top. That's actually super scratched up. That's kind of disappointing, actually. So I ordered this from the same place, so maybe I'll give them a shout and see if they can uh, hook me up with a replacement. Because there's, no, um, there's no lens protector or anything on this, which I kind of thought there would be. But um, that's too bad. You can see there's a few uh, little scratches. So anyways, I'll hit them up, see what they can do for me. But um, anyways, going to put this on all the same, um, just to kind of complete the look here. So let's remove the, two set, or the backing for this. I wonder if these are maybe original. Maybe they came from an original Game Boy Advance. It's possible. I'll reach out to them and uh, see what they have to say. And I mean, for all we know, these are actual OEM Game Boy Advance covers. I assume they were going to be replicas, but that might not be the case. Let's see if I can just uh, wipe this down a bit. Yeah, still kind of scratchy, but... Anyways, you get the idea, so let's turn this on and just get an idea of how that's going to look once this repair is now complete. So the uh, really kind of, I think, complements the back. Uh, this is an aftermarket decal, but uh, aftermarket or new, maybe, I'm not sure. There we go, so that's a nice... Uh, much nicer display, way brighter. You can see this anywhere. Yeah, that's not too bad. Um, the, the one thing that I did note, like again, it is a little bit bigger than the original one. So you have to either use their supplied display, which is size to fit. So again, you can see it's lined up on the left, but slightly wider on the right. Or you, and a little bit taller too or you can center the display like I did. So this, my tutorial is obviously quite a bit more involved than your average one. Um, there are also some 3D printed brackets you can get that kind of sit nicely and just hold everything in place. But um, anyways, that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you found it interesting. I know this, uh, I mean, that looks way better, I think, the display. So I'm probably gonna 
spend a bit of my evening fiddling around with this, playing with this guy. Uh, see if I can get uh, maybe uh, an opinion on the actual display, if I notice any issues with it or anything down the road. But um, like I said, it seems pretty good, and I can't remember the price offhand. I'm going to put a link to it in the description, and I want to thank handheldlegend.com for um, helping me out with some of these parts. Um, very much appreciated. Um, I'm actually going to, they've supplied me with a discount code. So uh, the first 10 people that place an order through Handheld Legend are going to get 10% off their order. So that's their way of thanking me for um, kind of showing their parts off. And again, my way of thanking them for being able to help me out with uh, hooking me up with some parts. So hopefully you found this video interesting. Um, I, I've I think this looks a lot better than the original one, that old, terrible display. But leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of this. Um, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You get those notifications. You see when I release new content. And uh, uh, that's it for today. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.